I'm Edie Lush here with a report from Davos. Very nice to be with Sheila Patel. She's a social entrepreneur. She's one of the founders of Shack Dwellers International. I'd love to know what a social entrepreneur is doing in a place like Davos. What is your, what's the message that you've come here with? I represent an organization that brings poor people living informally together. We now operate in 33 countries, in about 200 to 300 cities. Mm -hmm. And we have learned from our own experience that if we don't make ourselves known, we don't make our voices heard, and we don't tell everybody what we want to do, we will continue for another several generations to be ignored and marginalized. Mm -hmm. And we want to come here and say that cities have increasing informality. Mm. And by informality, you mean people who are not living in within the system? Within, well, they actually produce most they of produce, the system. There's a lot of productivity, right? Yeah, and, and they are the foundation of a lot of support structures on which formal institutions and people like you and me can yeah. go to work because we have support. Mm -hmm. So what we want to say is that uh, a city and a citizenship is related to geographies. Right. And the fact that some geographies are invisible is the challenge. Okay. And so we're saying that we are not invisible. We are there. Our children have the right to the entitlements of citizenship. Uh, we have the right to have the kind of safety net that all cities have to give, mm -hmm. which is water, sanitation, electricity, education, health. Mm -hmm. We are not begging, we are not asking for help, we are asking for entitlements. Okay. And we want to be part of the solution. We don't want to sit on our haunches and wait for somebody to do something. We will actually produce, and we have produced solutions that the city, if it's sensitive, takes on mm -hmm. and then scales up. So we have done amazing work in, the, in this constituency, but it's not enough. Okay, let me come back to the solutions that you've come, come up with, but I'd love to spend a moment taking a snapshot on where we are now, because we are in a kind of tornado of crises yes. with the war on Ukraine causing a spike in energy prices, worries about inflation, food insecurity, and I'd love you to just zoom in and tell me what that looks like for people living in some of these communities. So... If you looked at people's lives before COVID, there was like a plateau of crisis and difficulties for which there was some form of what I call depleting survival response. Mm -hmm. So each time you survived a problem, it diminished your assets, it diminished okay. your health, it diminished your optimism. Mm -hmm. COVID just suppressed that several degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, people, you just imagine you have a 100 to 300 square foot house. Yeah. You're locked in with your full family, which is usually eight to 10 people. Mm -hmm. If you're lucky, you have one or two secondhand mobile phones. Right. And your kids are supposed to study digitally. Right. You can't do it on an old, no. non-smartphone. You're in lockdown and you don't have a city that gives you food. Mm. Uh, your work is stopped. Many rural families that had migrants who came to the city to earn a cash income had to go back. And post uh, the COVID crisis in terms of when the vaccinations came in and life became mobile again, a lot of people have already lost their jobs. Yeah. The businesses that gave them informal work have been closing down and they don't have any support structures. Mm -hmm. During COVID, we also found out that people were basically eating carbs, eating carbohydrates. Right. So the incidence of blood pressure, diabetes, all these chronic diseases, has exponentially grown with younger and younger people. Hmm. And we don't have a health system that does any primary or promotive work. So until you have a seriously dangerous episode, 
You don't know whether you have diabetes. Right. You don't know whether you have blood pressure. And now you have the climate challenges. Mm. Uh, you have extreme heat. There are many parts of the global south, and I think in some yeah. places in the north. In the south, the country where I come from, places have 48 degrees centigrade heat. I mean, it's unbelievable. Unbearable. Unbearable. People can't get out of their homes. If they don't get out of their homes, they don't have money for the day to eat. Right. So then there are floods. There are winds that are blowing people's houses away. Right. So all these things are demonstrating, like the IPCC report said, that climate challenges are not in the future and we don't have adequate responses to deal with it. So let me take you to a more positive place because you yeah. mentioned that there are already solutions. Yeah. Give me one of the solutions that you have found works that could be scaled up. Well, we already have a kind of scaling which is very different from the kind of scaling people see at Davos. Mm -hmm. our, our strategy is that every community explores new ways to solve old problems be it water, be it sanitation, be it health, mm. be it the right to live in the city, uh, to deal with floods, to deal with different types of challenges of food. And they talk to each other. And now in the mm. COVID period, we started web-based conversations. Mm -hmm. And uh, where one community thought of something, 500 groups all over the world, right. right? And then if it works for them, they go to their mayors and say, look, 15 groups are doing this. Right. this. Why don't we do it together? And we have mayors who work with us. So there's an exponential sort of growth of solutions that are not expensive, mm -hmm. that are very sensible. The One of the things which I would tell you about is that during COVID, most poor families didn't have any greens in their meals. Right. So we had a campaign. You just threw any seed in any mud around your house right. and you mashed it and put it into your pap. Uh -huh. Because most poor people were eating rice or maize right. or something like that. Right. So you substituted one third of your food with greens, any greens, any, greens. any edible greens. So that's what they did. And it transformed their blood sugar. Everybody started taking walks in their own neighborhood in their what we call their slum bubble. Yeah. And people started recovering, at least initially, the traumas that they were going through. Because it's a very fearful thing to say, I have mm. this disease. And as more and more people began to understand the connection between their food intake and chronic diseases, more and more people went to get checked and now you can do it digitally. Yeah. It's not that old fashioned sort of magical Go to the thing. doctors, yeah, get an appointment. Yeah. So people bought, you know, checking blood sugar kits, mm. they bought digital, uh, you know, everybody put money together and bought one digital right. blood pressure machine. And suddenly it was all over the place. Mm. So. What we do now is we have a campaign called What Women Want, mm -hmm. Slum Women. So they've said they want greens in their meals, they want transport that is affordable, safe and regular. They want to know when disaster happens, who's going to come and help them and how they themselves should be ready for it. And women must take care of their health if they want to take care of their families mm. and that they look at the you know climate related uh, transport that is being done under the name of mitigation and saying it's very elitist because right. it's trying to get people who lived who use cars to go into trains so the trains are getting air conditioned right. sanitized and right. too expensive for poor people right. so they're saying we want wheels for ourselves too Got it. So these are the campaigns that we do and we look at what we can do ourselves and then we pester everybody else. For what else you need. Sheila, thank you so much for stopping by Hub Culture to the Pavilion. So pleased we we, we dragged you out here into our, I don't know what we're going to call this, it's our nature boudoir. <laughs> nature boudoir. <laughs>
Thank you very much and look forward to staying yeah. in touch. Okay, thank you.